Hey guys, what's up? Today we are going to take a look at this. And what's that? That's a pretty beefy and pretty big laptop cooler for those laptops that run too hot. So before we begin, let's unbox it together and then talk about it. This is Hubwood. So I'd say let's just begin opening that baby up. There's some documentation and um, a USB cable as well. And there's some kind of soft pad in here. Pretty lightweight, actually. There's the AC adapter. Oh, and, and there's some stuff that we can peel off. Smells a bit like plastic, I guess. Well, it's plastic. Okay, so down here, that's where we adjust the speeds and um, yeah, the fan speeds and maybe the RGB color stuff. Then we have some soft edge around it where we can place our laptop onto. And as you can see below the laptop cooler, there is a big opening for the air to Enter the cooler from below. Ah. And we have some little feet over here that prevent the laptop from slipping down if it's a big one. That's it, so how does it feel? It feels very light, it feels like plastic. All right, here we've got some connections as well because this actually also is supposed to work as a USB hub. So we connect it via the USB C cable here to a USB A port of our laptop and then we get three additional USB ports which is always nice to have. That's a good idea actually. By the way I don't know if that is going to be USB 3 but we'll find out. Okay but before I'm going to test it let's just have a look at how it sounds when I give it a first start. Okay so I plugged it in and now I guess I have to press the power button. All right power on. The RGB lighting kicks in. It says on the display right now that it is at 300 RPM. It's already pretty hearable actually. You can also, I can already feel the airflow though. Can, can I adjust the RGB lighting? There's a memory button, an M button I guess for memory or for mode. Ah, it's for, it's for mode so I can change the RGB modes. All right, the third button is for the color for color switching and the M is for mode which yeah changes between like breathing and flashing and subtle change and stuff like that so all right okay so I'm going to ramp up the fans right now and um, actually my microphone is here so you should be able to hear it cry properly it's at 300 now 400 500 600 1000 it's getting loud now 1500 Woo! 2000 and the maximum is 2800 and I don't know if you can still hear me, but it's quite loud. It's quite loud. So using headphones I can still hear it. I actually can still hear it. Okay Let's ramp that down That's loud. We will see how that affects the temperature because they told me It can on some laptops drop the temperature by over 20 degrees Celsius, which would be insane I guess but we'll find out because my Aorus 15 actually gets pretty hot sometimes. So I'm really curious how that is going to work. One day later. Okay, now after unboxing in a first look, I did spend a while testing the Lano laptop cooler through its paces and it's actually insane. But before we take a closer look at the numbers and the graphs, let me point out for full disclosure that this video is sponsored by Lano as they asked me if I wanted to test one of their coolers, which of course, fits perfectly to my laptop affine audience while they did not tell me what to say whatsoever. The only thing they wished for was showing numbers like FPS, temperature and megahertz with and without the cooler, which is what I would have done of course anyways. So there's that. Now Lano actually states that this cooler is able to cool down a laptop by around 25 degrees Celsius under full load 
And that is a pretty bold claim in my opinion. So can they fulfill this promise? Spoiler up front? No, no spoiler today, just wait for it. Okay, so I actually tested the cooler with two different gaming laptops, one of which is my personal Gigabyte Aorus 15 with an RTX 3070 Ti up to 130 watt and an i7 12700H, as well as the new Acer Nitro V15 with an RTX 4050 at 75 watt and an i5 13420H. Whereas my personal Aorus 15 can get pretty hot, and the Acer Nitro V15 stays rather cool in comparison. So for the games, I've used both Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p and high settings, as well as Overwatch 2 at ultra settings to test the temperatures, the clock speeds and the FPS. And in both cases, I was just standing still at the same spot in the games to ensure a good FPS consistency. And let's begin with my OS 15 and Cyberpunk. For this test, I used the laptop's gaming performance mode, with the fan set to the power preset. I was running the game at 1080p with high settings without DLSS or frame generation. And I was also using my simple laptop stand with integrated fans as a comparison. When simply placing the laptop on the table, the GPU reached around 80 degrees Celsius with a clock speed between 1300 and 1345 MHz and the CPU reached around 90 to 91 degrees Celsius with a clock speed of 2900 to 3000 MHz. So there is clearly some sort of thermal throttling going on. In that case, the average FPS for this scene was 71 FPS. Now using my simple laptop stand to just raise the laptop from the ground to ensure a better airflow, the temperature dropped to 68 degrees for the GPU with the clock speed staying around the same and the CPU temperature dropped to around 81 degrees while the CPU clock already raised a bit to around 3100 to 3200 MHz. The FPS also seemed to be slightly better with now 73 FPS on average. Placing the laptop on the Lano laptop cooler and only using the slowest 300 RPM mode, the temperatures further dropped to 61 degrees for the GPU, with the clock speed now being between 1350 and 1380 MHz, while the i7 dropped to now only 74 degrees Celsius, while the CPU clock went up to now 3285 MHz. That is already almost 20 degrees less for both the GPU and the CPU. By the way, the average FPS was now at 74 to 75 FPS, which is an improvement of almost 6%. Ramping up the Lano's RPM to 1000 further dropped the GPU temperature to 54 degrees Celsius, with the clocks now being around 1380 to 1410 MHz, and the CPU dropped to 66 to 67 degrees Celsius, while its core clock further climbed to now 3400 to 3500 MHz, which is already 500 to 600 MHz more than when the laptop just sits on the table, while the FPS only improved a tiny bit more to around 75 to 76 FPS. Using the 2000 RPM setting, the clock speeds and the FPS didn't seem to be affected anymore, but the temperatures went down even a bit more to now only 50 degrees Celsius for the GPU, which is 30 degrees less than before, and 63 to 64 degrees Celsius for the CPU, which is up to 28 degrees less than without the Lano cooler. Further ramping up the Lano to 2800 RPM did not change anything compared to 2000 RPM, so I did not include that to keep the graph a bit clearer. Now for Overwatch 2, the initial numbers have been pretty identical for the temperatures and the core clocks with around 260 FPS on average. Placing the ROS 15 on my simple laptop stand dropped the GPU temperature to 71 degrees and the CPU to around 83 to 84 degrees, while their core clocks also seem to be just slightly faster and the average FPS now being at 262 FPS. But placing it on the Lano cooler at 300 RPM, that further dropped the GPU temperature to already only 61 degrees Celsius with again slightly faster core clocks and the i7 to 77 degrees Celsius, while that one was now already able to run at 3500 to 3700 MHz, and that is 600 to 800 MHz faster at an acceptable noise level, while the average FPS improved to now 264 FPS. Ramping up the Lano to 1000 RPM further improved the temperatures, just like before, to around 55 degrees for the GPU, with now even more faster core clocks and 69 to 71 degrees for, um, for the CPU, 
which was even able to further raise its clock speeds to now 3700 to 3800 MHz. And once again, even the FPS climbed a bit further to now 267 FPS. As once more, there was no difference between 2000 and 2800 RPM. I'm just showing the 2000 RPM numbers. And for the GPU, I now saw only 52 to 53 degrees Celsius and 65 to 67 degrees for the CPU, while the FPS even further improved to now 269 FPS. So almost 10 FPS more in that case. And to keep things a bit shorter, I will just quickly show you the same test results for the Acer Nitro V15, which as mentioned before is already pretty cool to begin with, but even for that, Delano was able to drop the temperatures down to an absolutely insane 45 degrees Celsius under full load for both the GPU and the CPU, while also improving the performance by almost 6%. And again, very similar results for Overwatch 2 on the Acer Nitro V15 with a drop of around 20 degrees for both the GPU and the CPU, which once more resulted in a small improvement for the FPS. So I guess it's actually safe to say that Lano didn't exaggerate. They promised and they delivered. And if you don't believe me, here's the video proof. Okay, so what we've got here now is that my laptop, um, the Aorus 15 from Gigabyte, is running at its gaming performance mode with the fans set to performance and i'm running cyberpunk 2077 at high settings right now we are getting around 81 degrees 82 degrees celsius for the gpu and around 90 to 91 degrees celsius for the cpu at a room temperature of around yeah 20 to 22 degrees celsius um, and now I'm going to place it directly on the Elano cooler and set the fan speeds from the Elano cooler to the maximum. And I'm going to show you how quickly it drops the temperatures. So, let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to activate the cooler. Now as you can see, only a few minutes later, the temperature for the GPU and the CPU dropped drastically by around 25 uh, degrees Celsius or even more, um, which affects both the GPU's clock and the CPU's clock in a significant way and we even get some more FPS on average in this case. Now let's also have a look at the noise level of the Lano RGB cooler, which according to Lano themselves should be between 20 and 70 decibel, which is actually pretty much what I've measured. But see and hear for yourselves. In case you wonder why I was holding the decibel meter, that was to prevent additional noise from the table's vibration due to the cooler ramping up. And you won't see a 20 um, decibel reading, because my equipment and testing situation won't allow that. Also, let's have a quick look at the power consumption of only the Lano gaming laptop cooler itself. On standby, it uses around 0.3 to 0.7 watt. Turning it on at 300 RPM, which again is the lowest possible speed, it's using around 6 to 8 watt, while actually already being pretty effective, as we saw earlier. At 1000 RPM, it ramps up to around 14 watt, and at the full 2800 RPM, it pulls a maximum of 30 watt, which of course isn't nothing and should be kept in mind. By the way, I also found out what this soft cloth pad is for. It's a replacement for the dust filter at the bottom of the cooler, as you can see here, and it prevents dust from entering the whole ecosystem of the cooler, 
which then of course also prevents dust to enter your laptop as well, which actually might really extend your laptop's lifetime, while it will surely at least improve the dirt level inside of your laptop. By the way, on idle the Lano cooler was able to bring down my Aorus 15 temperatures to 31 degrees Celsius for the CPU and 27 degrees Celsius for the GPU, compared to its usual 45 to 50 degrees for the CPU and around 40 degrees for the GPU, and that's pretty neat. And while we're at it, I really think that the overall engineering for this cooler is very clever. You can really feel and hear the difference when the fan is activated and you don't have a laptop on top of the cooler, versus placing a laptop in a way that no air can leak without passing through the laptop. The whole system then creates some kind of overpressure that forces and pushes all the air directly through the laptop. I was actually able to feel that by holding my hands over my laptop's keyboard where I could feel the cold air coming through the keys. So it really floods your whole laptop with cold air which most likely is the reason why it works that good. For that it's pretty important to have a laptop that is big enough to fully close any gaps between the big opening and the memory foam edge. I think it won't work with a smaller 14 inch laptop. If I compare this to my simple laptop stand, that's a completely different mode of operation. Actually considering the numbers, even at only 300 RPM, when the noise level is still acceptable, you already get a huge benefit in terms of better temperature and even some improvement in performance. I personally would probably use it at 300 RPM most of the time and maybe up to 1000 RPM in extreme cases. Anything above only gets you minor benefits, but that could of course be different if you live in a really hot country and in the summer your room is like 30 degrees Celsius or above. However, actually having this opportunity is amazing and Lano really nailed it with the performance, even if that comes at a price and a high noise level. I'd say this is as good as it gets without using an active air conditioning system of any kind. And last but not least, the USB-C hub is not using USB 3. So you could only use it for stuff like your mouse or a keyboard, etc. But not an external hard drive. Now what's my conclusion? Considering the high cost of this cooler, this is clearly targeted at enthusiasts and people that either want to overclock their laptops or live in very warm conditions. But I guess this is probably the best laptop cooler of its category that you can buy. And as mentioned before, at 300 RPM it's not that loud and already pretty effective. So if you want to give your precious laptop a treat, this might be really a good gadget to calm your mind about these high laptop temperatures. I'm sure that there are many laptops out there for which this cooler would even get better results considering the performance if thermal throttling is an issue. This reminds me of an experiment which I did with a big retro fan a few years back if you'd like to watch that next. While that of course didn't work as good as this guy over here. And that's all for today. If you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel and don't you forget to like the video as well. That really helps with this YouTube algorithm stuff etc blah 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 blah. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and cheers.